Hey everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you here on my W126 how to replace this guy right here. This is the crank sensor for M103. You can find that engine in like a W124 or W126, um, the 300E and the 300 SEL, probably most common. Um, I'm sure this in some ways is pretty similar to how to replace it on a M104 engine, but I can show you right here, you've got the uh, crank sensor connector sitting on the uh, EZL. So you can see it kind of routes here and then goes up into this zip tie here. And then it goes back down under the air cleaner and under the intake. So I'll show you what it looks like. So the way you want to take off the air cleaner is you want to first undo this little intake air temperature sensor by pushing it on these and twisting it. You just want to like kind of pull this guy out and massage that out of the way. Things usually break, so just be careful. Mine's already splitting open, but you can see there's a bolt right here, right next to cylinder number one's injector. Um, on some cars, if it hasn't already broken, there will be another one right here. Um, but mine's already broken, and then there's a third one that sits right under this AC line right here on that stud. So you want to get something, uh, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. Just use a regular ratchet. I usually just get in here like that and hit them just like that. This one you only need to really kind of just loosen up because you don't need to take it all the way off, it's slotted. This one you'll definitely need to uh, take all the way out. I mean it really just takes a couple turns and you can kind of just spin them off. So, and then I usually set them on the radiator. But then you just kind of pop this guy off here. It's just a little PVC hose, or PCV hose that is, and then you just kind of grab the air cleaner and make sure they're all loose enough here. This one's not loose enough. But yeah, you do not need to take those clips off. That's if, only if you're changing the air filter. So then you just kind of loosen that guy. This guy should really just pull right off just like that. So you want to set this aside and you can see this is what it looks like here underneath. So like I said it goes into this zip tie from the EZL and then we'll follow that wiring all the way here and then it kind of goes under here and uh, connects to some little clips I believe right next to the idle air control valve. This is the wire right here. And then you can see it connects. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. It connects in these little clamps that kind of just hold it. So um, it's kind of your choice whether or not you break those. And I believe a guy in another video just routed them a different way, not under the intake again but your crank sensor is hiding let's see right there right next to the vacuum line for the transmission so you can see that bolt right there so one thing i definitely recommend before even thinking about trying to break that nut loose is since it's in not a readily accessible area yeah it's kind of hiding down here and if you're working on like a 124 i mean that's going to be firewall here I mean this gap right here is just gonna be smaller so I would hit it with that bolt with some of this like penetrating fluid I like uh, stuff like you know this blaster from Home Depot or PV blaster whatever really works so you just kind of spray that there on that bolt and you can you know shoot it with some brake clean after but 
let that sit for you know a couple minutes let it uh, absorb and then you can uh, you can try and uh, break it loose with this guy so I've got a five millimeter it looks like the size was this is a five millimeter Allen um, I like this setup you just use an extension with like a swivel on the end but you know it could be kind of hard because this guy's really uh, flopping around so you might have a hard time uh, lining it up so you can kind of do that trick of the trade where you just take the uh, some electrical tape here or like an o-ring and put it on this joint so it makes it stiffer so it's a little easier to line up so I'm gonna do that so then it'll pretty much look like this so you can see you put that on there and that guy really doesn't move around a lot but once you kind of like move it I mean it still flexes but it just it's not just flopping around so that can be helpful so you just kind of want to put this guy on there I mean you can kind of see that I might even be able to do it with uh, one hand holding the camera so I got it in there so I'd recommend just uh, probably carefully with two hands Let's see if I can set this guy here while I do that all right so it's like that so it did break loose it's awesome it saves a, a lot of headache so it just kind of take that bolt out there and mine stayed in there so you can see it's a little screw like that I'm gonna put that to the side so that sensor should now really just pull straight out of there Let's see if I can grab it It might not just come straight out. I'm gonna have to get like a screwdriver or something under there. So let's see here, something like this, a pocket screwdriver. You know, they usually have a magnet on the back, a little flathead on top. You can probably get in there. Put your arm under here and kind of just slip it between the transmission and that sensor and just kind of lever it out like that. I don't know how well you can see that. There we go. So you just kind of like lever it out like that, and that can make it uh, definitely easier on you. And so mine's out there. You can see it's just a little silver magnet there. So then once you do that, you just kind of want to come over here. And I mean, you can break these zip ties if you want. A lot of people like to keep them factory and stuff, and they just kind of push on this tab and push the uh, push the clip back in there. You can see here if I can get mine off without messing it up. There you go. Takes a little bit of effort, but. So once that's off, that's there. You kind of you know leave them there and put them back after. You just kind of pull your guy through here. Just want to make sure you be careful with all this. These old cars have a lot of brittle components and stuff around them, so just be careful when you're pulling it out. You don't want to make another headache. Alright, and then there's another zip tie here, and another one right here, and uh, so I'll get those out and we'll look at the next part. So I got those two zip ties off, so I've got about this much of the cable out. And you can see it routes under this main hard uh, engine harness holder. So right here on the other side of this guy, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. You know, I can just swap this guy with, you know, a 10. Get in there and just start loosening that guy up. And I'll show you why. So I noticed there's a, uh, 
once you get that guy out you see there's a zip tie right here which is kind of kind of difficult to get to so, i mean if you got this guy kind of loose or lifted up a little bit it might make your life easier and then you can see um this guy's right here so you can see all right all right so i got that guy out so you can see now i'm in between cylinder one and two's uh, intake pipe so there's that connector i was talking about earlier again that kind of like just holds it down to like a, a mounting bracket or something so I'll do my best to kind of show you but if you kind of put your hand under here if you got you know uh smaller arms or hands or whatever um you can kind of just push on the bottom of this guy and it'll push it out i'll try and show you what this little thing looks like so this little guy looks like this they often break so i mean you can always just zip tie it or something again but um all you got to do is really just push on these things see if i can grab it here so it would kind of look like this so if you just kind of like pushing these little guys in, they'll just pop out fairly easily. So, um, there's probably another one or two of these guys under there. So, let me see if I can try and find them. All right, so this one's like, there is another one. It is kind of really hard to see, but I'd say under the, uh, you can see this is the last intake pipe for cylinder six. So you can see cylinder five, it's kind of sitting right under there. And it's kind of connected like to the support brackets. It'll be really hard to get on camera. But, um, you might be able to kind of see it there. There it is right there. It's really difficult to see, but now that one you probably just want to, you know, break or something. But, uh, I'll try and get it out and um, we'll worry about reconnecting it uh, later. All right, so and then there is one more on top of that last one. See if I can get this one. It's a little more easy to see. So this is the air filter, uh, oil filter right here, this thing. This big black guy here. So look right there, it's connected to that little bracket that's the cable so there's another one of those uh kind of white tabs right there that you want to try and carefully get out so probably for this i'm i'm thinking that this is gonna be the right tool kind of a a, a longer uh than standard uh, flathead screwdriver so to get that guy out we'll probably just kind of come in here like we did to kind of lever the end of the sensor out. So you can see I got this guy here. Let's see, it's kind of hard to <laughs> do this while holding the camera, but you can see I got one side up and then the other, so then that guy's loose. And that looks like that's gonna be reusable. And maybe you can do exactly that to this one that's kind of hidden under number five intake pipe there. But you can feel it. Kind of if you put your arm right here, there's like a, let's see, where is it? It's kind of like a bracket that kind of goes down at an angle like that underneath there. So I'm gonna try that same trick. So let's see here. Trying to really get a shot of this connector here. So there's the one that I just showed you that I took out. So that next one just kind of goes under right here. It's just kind of connected. Yep, right there. You can kind of see it. Right there. So that guy is hiding right under pipe four, kind of in between this throttle linkage and this little all here so again flathead screwdriver I try and come back around here if I can and kind of try and uh, mess with it from this angle just kind of 
push on it. It's definitely going to be easier with two hands. But even if you can't get it off, you can at least see it. You can break it or something. So I got one side off. There's a the second one. I don't know if that's going to be reusable. But I'll see when I pull it out. So before pulling this sensor back through, ripping it out of the car, I highly recommend whether you go from that way and pull it out this way, or you go from you know the connector end and pull it back through the front, or the back that is, I would definitely recommend like tying some like rope like underneath this connector or the other end so that when you pull it through whichever way you go you can have that string already in there you untie it just tie the new sensor to it and just kind of wiggle it back through because it's just going to make your life so much easier um, to get this thing back in the car um, i'll show more about that in the later video but uh, i did an alternative way but um I'm going back here and showing you, this is me already installing the new sensor, but I just wanted to make that point for you, uh, you know, making the same mistake I did. Well, all right, so here's the guy right here. It's really uh, original and old, so these guys, if you want to reuse them, these kind of like spin them apart, take them off. But yeah, those are OEM. Looks like I was able to save all of them. If you're careful, you can keep them in good shape, but you can see that this guy's kinda chewed off there. Just old rubber and stuff. I'm gonna, I mean, you can do this in the car. You can just unplug that connector. But I would use a, uh, you know, a meter like this, fluke meter, or, you know, a DMM. Doesn't have to be like fluke or anything, but you just uh, take the end here, and after the car's ran for a while, you can put uh, one pin in the center and one pin on the outside and check the resistance. Um, it's usually best to do that when it's warm. You know, because the car is going to get warm. My car is running rough when it gets hot. It runs great when it's cold. So crank sensors usually kind of malfunction when it's hot. So what you can do is put one in there. One there on the side. Just like that. Flip this guy over to ohms. You can see it's 800 kilo ohms. I believe I read somewhere that's pretty much what it's supposed to be. But uh, once you heat up this end, and you get like a hair dryer or a heat gun or something and heat that guy up, then usually crank sensors will just <clears throat> go open. They'll, you know, everything in there will expand and uh, go bad and cause all kinds of problems from rough running to not starting when they're hot. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go get my heat gun and uh, see if I don't get a change. So now I've got my heat gun. So all I'll do is here is just kind of watch that value. Again, you can do this in the car. You can just use the car's heat. And uh, when your car starts acting up, just see if it's going. But um, I pulled it all the way out because I plan on replacing it regardless just to have a known good part in there. Maybe preventative so I don't get stranded somewhere eventually. But uh, just go ahead and start kind of heating this guy up. And usually what you'll see is that that number will climb because heat creates resistance. And uh, if it gets bad enough, this sensor will um, pretty much just go OL on the meter saying that there's an open, so I mean you can see it climbing. You see how usually you can uh, kind of monitor the temperature, uh, the temperature with like a infrared uh, heat gun, 
I don't really have one of those here. I got one at work, but uh, I'm just gonna heat it up and see if it doesn't just open. But yeah, you get the idea. You can. I'll check out. Uh, I'm just gonna put the new one in and see if it doesn't work. Cause it might take a while to heat this guy up. All right, and then just for comparison's sake, I figured I'd just show what the reading is for uh, a regular new sensor. Pretty much the same value, so the only difference is that this other one may be giving out when it gets hot, so I'll show you. Uh, I'm gonna install this new one, fire it up, and see what's going on here. You pretty much just Brought it the same way that it was. Uh, pop in these little white clips where we took them out and you should be good to go. I'll go ahead and start by kind of just laying this guy across. You can feed pretty much either side you want. Just kind of put it back through cylinder one and two and then just kind of feed it under the engine. So one thing you can do, um, you can feed, kind of feed this guy through the, uh, the route, just kind of straight along the end of the engine, back over to, you know, where it comes out. So you can see you got the other end of this thing. It's one of those little cheap claw things you get from like Harbor Freight or something that you can use, grab the cord sensor and just pull it back through. Um, if you don't do the string trick that I showed you earlier, where you, uh, before you pull the sensor through, you know, one way or the other, you tie a string to one end or a paracord, rope, whatever. And then when you pull it out, you undo the rope, connect the new sensor, and then pull it back through. It'll make it real easy. You know, I forgot to do that, but, um, you know, this, this, this will work just fine too. Because it's, uh, you can't really get your hands under there to guide this flimsy cable, so... Um, I'll show you what it looks like installed here. So the hooks on that flexible cable don't really hold it super well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip tie the cable to it and that'll make it easier. So I would say that the string trick would probably be better, but uh, you know, this should work just fine too. So I've got the new sensor installed. Um, it's pretty much all the way in. Or Ran it through, pulled it through. So I'm gonna plug in my my new guy there and uh, tighten that guy back down. Pretty much just have to take this, route it back how it was, you know, under there, over everything. So I'll show you. Uh, the next step here, connect all my zip ties and do my clips. All right, so I got it all installed and I fired it up. It doesn't seem like uh, that's my issue. My problem's still persisting, so I'm gonna continue to mess with that. If there's something else I replace in the future, I'll definitely uh, record that and make a video. So, but that's how you install a crank sensor. Thanks for watching, everyone.